This was the panel that I was most enamored about, to talk about the unfinished business of the 20th century. And that is recognizing one of our iconic heroes, Dory Miller, and the quest for the Congressional Medal of Honor. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Congressman Joseph D. Ogarty from New York, who has labored on the Dory Miller issue for over 30 years and originally introduced legislation with the late Mickey Lee. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you. But I'm delighted to be here. I'm a persistent guy. You talked about the Harlem Hellfighters. Well, I started the Congressional Hellfighters to get this thing started 30 years ago with Mickey Lee. That's how much resistance that we face with the military to correct historic injustices, especially historic racial injustices. I didn't know when I became a congressman in 1985 that a million hundred and fifty thousand black Americans served World War I and World War II. And until this fine military historian came to my office in Mount Vernon, New York, and told me, Joe, you're the only one to respond to a letter that I had Governor Cuomo said to the 30 congressmen delegation. There were no women at that time in that delegation. Uh, and I needed to come to visit you. So he came to visit me, Dr. Ramsey, and I said, well, you know, let's go over this letter again because I can't believe what I read. And what he told me was a million, 550,000 black Americans served and not one, not one got our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. It's not called the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's called the Medal of Honor. It's the highest award. Each military service has its highest award, but this transcends all of them. Okay? And I said, listen, Dr. Ramsey, I'm a certified public accountant. I became the first CPA, believe it or not, ever elected to be this company. I said, those numbers don't add up. What's the problem? He says, well, did you know there was segregation in World War I and World War II? I said, no, I'm from a lower middle class family from the Bronx, our parents are immigrants, they had no education. We moved to Westchester County when I was 15, 1957. And I said, no one taught me that. I have a pretty good education. Fordham Prep, Fordham University, Jesuits. And I said, you know, this is too big for me to handle alone. Reagan was the president. I'm a junior member of the minority party. And I have learned about Mickey Leland. Uh, we had done some work together. He needed a Republican. I'm a registered Republican, but bodies don't mean anything to me, as you can see. He needed a Republican to go against President Reagan because he was about, with executive order, to eliminate food stamps. And nobody would sit with it, but I did. And little did I know that would then earn me a full partnership with the chairman of the Black Caucus, Mickey Leland, to do what you're hearing me say today. But little did I know he would die two years later, delivering food and medicine to poor people of Ethiopia. And that's why you see over here this is the of death. So I am carrying this on, as I've said so many times, in his memory. A wonderful guy. We will get that medal for, Mil for Dory Miller. There's no question about it. It's going to be not easy, but I believe this is the year we've got to do it. And there is something going on right now in Waco, Texas, where he comes from. Uh, they're building a $2 million memorial for him and they expect to dedicate it on Pearl Harbor Day, where he acted bravely to deserve this medal, and that's going to be December 7th of this year, and I've got some ideas on how we might be able to get that medal so it's done in conjunction with that. Now, I heard before about the Shaw University report. I have to give you one correction on that, because why did I put this booklet together? Because I'm kind of the institutional memory on this. People talk about the medal given in 91. Then the seven medals given, they say, by Clinton in 97. And then the one we got, and I was at the Obama White House with Harry Johnson, and that short report came as a result of a compromise that I struck with Mickey Leland in the office of the Defense Secretary. Reagan opened the door for me through his chief of staff, Howard Baker at that time, he says, you've got to stop all this stuff. You've got 180 signatures. You're creating a riot here. You're a troublemaker. Go visit the Secretary of, uh, of Defense. Let's try to get this thing solved. So I go, and I realize that we had to accept 
a compromise. And the compromise was a pretty good one. He would take Department of uh, Defense money, fund a black university, I didn't know which one at the time, it became Shaw, to do an independent study, World War I and World War II, which members of the, the, the service received the second highest award, why didn't they get the first? Okay? Now I won't be with you tomorrow, I know Jeff Simons, because we had a, a, a panel on the National Archives on this issue two years ago. But I think you've got to mention this, that everything that you see in this book is a continuum. Everybody thinks, well, we got the medal for Henry Johnson, and then the seven that came, and then now Dory Miller, then Henry Johnson, Dory Miller. It's all one continuum that started with me and Mickey Leland. And hopefully it'll keep going, as you said now, with this study, because it's a good idea. But even if it doesn't, I feel morally obliged to make sure we get a medal for Dory Miller in memory of Mickey Leland. Because I didn't know who Dory Miller was. But when I came up with this guy from New York, Henry Johnson, and went to Mickey, he says, Joe, I'm going to do this with you. But I got a guy here in Texas. I thought it was Houston. It's, it's Waco, Texas. He says, his name is Dory Miller. Can we do this together? I says, absolutely. So we started together, and we put in two bills in 1987 to open the statute of limitations, one for Dory Miller and one for Henry Johnson. I put uh, Dory Miller's in here, but there's another booklet that shows both. That was 1987. That's what started this. Okay? Now, when Clinton awarded seven more medals in 1997, I think it was, he did it, but he didn't do anything to work on that. He was just the beneficiary of the report from the Shore University, and I had to write this very long letter to the New York Times. They don't print letters this long, usually. All right? But this is the letter, read it, it's uh, for the New York Times, where I had to create the historical perspective that this was not Clinton's work. I'm happy he gave the medals. He was the vehicle. But they had to know that this started with Mickey Leland and Joe DiGuardi back. And now it continues. But thank you for remaining here. Thank you for being here. Please, if you don't have this, take it with you. And if you have others that would like to have this, I have other copies of it. Just come up and we'll give it to you. Get it out. Information is power. Okay? And that's what this is all about. God bless you all for coming. <laughs>